Hello, and uh, welcome to the remake of a film called The Ionic Compound, Structure and Properties. The first one had a bit of a howler in it, so uh, here's one without any big mistakes, hopefully. And um, hopefully by the end of it, you all know what an ionic lattice is, and that it's made from cations and anions, and what those things are. You'll be able to relate the structure of the lattice to the physical properties of ionic substances, so that the things like whether they conduct and how hard it is to melt them, and so on. Okay, so first of all, let's look close up at what an ionic lattice looks like, or in other words, describe the structure of an ionic compound. Okay, and in this left-hand diagram over here, we've got a um, lithium chloride lattice, and it shows that we've got lithium ions and chloride ions. Lithium ions are a bit smaller than the chloride ions because they've lost electrons and these have gained. Anyway, you've got these blue lines here, which they're supposed to be the ionic bonds. Okay, that is an electrostatic attraction. Okay, so when you're asked to define what we mean by an ionic bond, it is an electrostatic attraction. What's it an electrostatic attraction between? Well, it's an electrostatic attraction between positive ions, which we call cations, and negative ions, which are in general called anions. Okay, so some key terms there. First of all, um, sorry, I thought there was someone at the door. First of all, uh, what we mean by a lattice, so that's this regular arrangement of ions. The definition of an ionic bond, which is the electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions in a lattice, or between cations and anions. Okay, so that shows you the bonds. This lattice shows a slightly more realistic arrangement where the ions are practically touching each other, but you can see hopefully in both of them that the positive ions are surrounded by negative ions and the negative ions are surrounded by positive ions. Okay, well let's see if we can uh, use this structure to actually explain why, uh, why ionic substances have the properties that they do. So first of all, let's look at conductivity. In other words, whether these substances conduct electricity or not. Now, it's important to consider different states. Okay, These could be either solid, liquid, or AQ. Okay, So that is to say a solid ionic substance, one that you've melted using heat, which is quite hard to do because they normally have quite high melting points, or one that you've dissolved in water, AQ. Now, in the solid state... The ions are trapped in fixed positions and can't move around. Okay, so this means that they are insulators in the solid state. It won't conduct electricity. And that's got nothing to do with electrons. And people often talk about electrons here because they're thinking about electrons allowing metals to conduct. But these don't conduct because of electrons. They conduct because of their ions. But they won't do it as solid because the ions are trapped in their lattice positions. As soon as you melt the solid, the ions can move around, so they can conduct electricity. And another way of getting them to move around is to dissolve them in water. So ionic substances will conduct in aqueous solution or in the liquid state, that is, you've melted them, as opposed to having dissolved them, but they won't conduct when they're solids. Um, they tend to be soluble in water, although that's not a completely, that's not a rule that applies to every ionic solid. And there'll be more detail about that later if you're studying this in year 12, but in year 11 you don't really have to worry about it. And then finally, whether they're malleable or whether they're brittle, these are kind of opposites of one another. So malleability meaning you can change its shape without it breaking. If something's brittle, it means you, if you try and change its shape, it's going to break. So if we just um, look back at our previous slide and this ionic lattice, Okay, let's use this one on the right. We've got the negative ions and the positive ions here. Okay, now if I try and change the shape of this ionic substance, it's like sliding one of these layers over the other. Okay, and if you do that, you'll notice that the positives will come into contact with positives and negative will come into contact with negative. In other words, like charges will come into contact and they'll repel each other. They don't attract, they repel each other and that would cause this substance to fracture. Okay, so on the subject of whether these substances are malleable or brittle, they tend to be brittle for the reasons we've just discussed, to do with like-charged ions coming into contact, repelling 
and causing the substance to fracture. Okay, well that's about it, about the structure and properties of ionic substances. Um, I hope it made sense, but by all means go back and look over any part of it that didn't, and uh, if that doesn't help, then ask me in class.